In the past, I would have done anything rather than teach gymnastics <laughs> um, because I didn't feel comfortable. If, like Alison Smith, you find teaching gym a challenge, then this programme is for you. Alison teaches Year 3 at Stowford Primary in Ivy Bridge, Devon. Today, we've arranged for a gym expert to come in and advise her on some of the basics of teaching gym at Key Stage 2. Sharon Key's job is to help primary school teachers create interesting gym lessons. She gives some advice on structure, tips on good technique and guidelines for safety. I think the problem in primary schools is that all teachers feel concerned, or majority of teachers feel concerned about gymnastics, about the skills, about the safety side, and then they're concerned about taking those skills onto apparatus. They're worried about children falling off the apparatus. In this programme, she's going to watch one of Alison's classes, which we'll also film so they can assess it later. But first, what are Alison's major concerns? In gymnastics, the areas that would worry me would be health and safety. I want to make sure that I'm doing, teaching the lesson properly, but also that the children are safe. Today's lesson is based on a QCA scheme of work about balance, using floor and apparatus to create a sequence of contrasting movements. Something that we've been trying a great deal is with the QCA is actually looking at the core task. So if the teachers use the core task to introduce the first lesson, from that they can assess the children's ability and then decide what they're going to teach from then on. I'd like to move about the space, not run, you can walk. I don't want you to touch any equipment and I'd like to keep going around it, not touching it, not over it until I say freeze and then I'll tell you what to do. Okay, off you go. This 30 minute lesson is part of a whole term's work in which Alison attempts to achieve all the expectations laid down in the core task. Normally I would introduce uh, a balance or a movement and, or a small series of movements and then the children would develop it and they would develop it at their own pace. Excellent, well done, and relax. After a warm-up, Alison challenges the children's previous learning by asking them to get into a body part balance. Good, lots of stretched limbs here. I can see lots of straight lines, well done. What I want you to do now is to think about how you're going to get into that balance. You're going to need to choose one, and it's going to be with part of you touching the apparatus, and you need to think how you're going to set yourself up to get there. The children are asked to think about different ways of travelling into their balances before performing their sequences to the rest of the class. Now they move to the staff room to analyse Alison's lesson, looking at what works and how to improve what doesn't. It was a lovely, calm, working atmosphere and yes, it was progressive, they did manage to achieve what you asked them to do and all in all, they did, they enjoyed themselves, which was great, so well done. Just a few points though that I want to go through with you and we've got the use of the, the camera here that we, we videoed the session. Um, possibly when, when you come in, look at the way that the children are standing, is there anything that maybe we could just improve right at the beginning to get that real sharpness of the lesson. Yes, often in the past I've done had them all long sit facing me. Lovely. I didn't do that because I was going straight into the moving around the space. Um, but so thinking I see about the saying. long sit then, when they're in long sit position, what are we trying to encourage in long sit? Their attention, I would have thought. Right, so how can we get that when they're here? Oh, we're nearly all there. Quick, quick. I could make them do a specific shape standing there. Yes, so it's just like you say, you, you yes. ask them to sit in long sit yes. beforehand. If they'd know the same when yes. they're standing straight, that would have been lovely. About the space. This time you may travel over it. The warm up was absolutely no brilliant. They had that Be real ready. idea of going about the space, moving in and out, asking them to change um, speeds and directions. And then it was a lovely idea to go from a great big shape. And your use of voice and how you encourage them to do that was really, really lovely stretched up on your toes excellent well done lovely balance that's very nice Sarah. and relax okay I'd like you to find a space now where you can make a large body part balance you ask them to choose a large body Not part balance the um, and then so change okay. to another one but you started naming them and large asking them to change good lots of tummy balances here lovely side one here isn't this excellent? Who's this then? Sarah, well done, beautiful. They had already chosen their different shapes. Possibly if you'd said to them, this time I want you to choose a large body part balance, can you name them now and gone around the room? Can I start counting? I think if the children had said to you, you know, put the hands up, 
um, V sit, yes. large body part, tummy, back, and then yes. at least then some of those that were struggling would have actually then yes. had more in yes. their head. This is good as well. Very nice V sit there. Excellent and relax. Well, Possibly okay. today you could have spent more time on travelling on hands and feet, and then oh, freeze. Are you on four points, three points, two, one? And then when they've gone now into selecting, it would have been a little bit easier right. for them. Does that yes. make sense? Yes. I probably um, moved into using the travelling quickly because I find travelling ideas difficult to... Uh... If they'd been travelling and you had said, right, we've travelled on our feet, how, how else can you travel? They would have come up with the ideas and that's when you stop and go, look at that example. Right. Look at that example. You did actually say to, a, to the children later, what does that bunny hop take you into? And you would get into a bunny hop. Lovely. Was it a bunny hop though? No, it was a froggy jump. Froggy jump, right. So number one froggy jump instead of bunny hops. You do know, you yes. are trying to get it from them. Yes. But then as you say, because you feel that bunny hops are the only things you can do, <laughs> but they will come up with more ideas. Yes. So if a child had been, say, two hands and one foot, you could have said, look at that children. They are doing that three point bouncing along. And then if they stop, what balance are they in? Three points, freeze. They needed more time to practice getting into that balance, hold for three seconds, come back again. Right. Otherwise, they're spending a long time here, which could have been actually used more to get into the travelling. Yes, yes, practice, practice travelling. One thing I find really hard <coughs> is watching everybody all at once. When you say, have a go now at doing this, and I'm trying to watch 27 children all doing different things and keep them in my head and think, <laughs> who am I going to show that's done this well? That's and right. by the time I've got two in my head, I've forgotten the third. Yes. Uh, yeah. What I always try and do <laughs> is go over to that particular child and say, that was really nice, remind me, you're going to show it. Yeah. And then go off again, that was lovely, remind me, you're going to show it again, and then stay. Right, everybody, right. stop. Right, who, who did, did I say? <laughs> say? Who did I say? That's because a good you idea. Are, you can't yes. keep going round, can you? Yeah, it yes. is difficult. And every time, because it's all moving on at the same time. That's it. So you turn your back on somebody and they finish theirs and done something else. Is there anybody who would like to say anything about what they've seen? Well, I like Josie when she, um... And she did those bunny hops and she climbed up the stairs, puts her hands on the stairs and bunny hop up. It's always a good idea to actually stop the children and select one or two that are doing something very, very good. Get all the other children to actually look at that particular child and say why it is good. So you're looking for extension in the legs, extension in the arms, pointed feet. During the lesson, Alison asked the children to work in pairs so they can evaluate each other's sequences. And maybe you can put them together and choose a good one that you can both do. We've right. gone from this really lovely work and then you say to the children, I'd like you to show a partner and then from the partner work, all of a sudden they were both doing it. And I thought the whole purpose, I don't know, what was your part of that? Was it for one person to look at the other and just to discuss what was good? Or was it suddenly to be do a partner sequence? It was to work in partners so that they could, it was to evaluate each other. I personally would have said that they needed to spend more time individually getting their sequences yes. complete. I was hoping that each would learn from the other. I suppose yes. I didn't make it clear enough. They then thought they had to do a paired exercise. That's right, yes. And they didn't. Yes. No. Right. But I think to go from individual work without actually completing the sequence, because I said a sequence should come away from the balance and finish, to right. suddenly being in pairs, two heads are better than one, but then they were having to think about the timing with each other, who moved first, whatever. Yes. And really, it didn't work, as you said, as an evaluation process. No. If it had been, right, uh, Sarah, watch Catherine's. Sarah, what was good about Catherine's? I have seen some lovely things. Would anybody like to show theirs? Right, I'm going to start with Lauren and Laura first. Can the others move out of the way slightly? Then they can have some room. Give them plenty of room. That's it. Good, really stretched. Well done. Unlike in a classroom, I don't want to leave them sitting still too long while I'm questioning. In a balance lesson, that is the problem, actually. If they're not travelling a lot, suddenly get them up and say, right, we've been doing lots and lots of balances. Are we a bit cold here? Gentle jog up on the spot, star jumps again. Right, let's move on and go. OK. All right. Good, well done. You know when you're actually in groups and you're all focusing on quite a small group? Mm -hmm. I know you are, as a teacher, fully aware of what's going on yes. around you, but how can you ensure that the children know that you are fully aware of what's going on? Well, the thing right? is, they all want you to watch. That's it, yeah, absolutely. So what you need to do is position yourself... Further yes, around. You, right, so yes, A, you can see position. them, but yes. also a good little ploy is, oh, Sarah, 
over the other side of the room. Fantastic balance. And everyone else thinks, hey, Mrs. Clever, she can see us all. Oh, right. When you are actually, <laughs> yes, yes, you're right in there. Or you suddenly say, stop, children, I saw a fantastic balance over there. I want everyone to look at it. Because sometimes when we're engrossed here, this group over here think, oh, Mrs. isn't watching me anymore. Right. It doesn't matter. Now, you're lucky because you've got a lovely super group, but sometimes children can get off, off task, right. sit and have a chit-chat, do something that they're not supposed to do, Right. And if you make them aware that you are at this end of the room, but you can still see what's going on down that other end of the room, right. they know. It's all over and you need to push it as far away and it's behind you and really push it out. And you've ended up in this huge bubble and you can't get it off. Really stretch to push it away. And then you found the zip. <laughs> Right, so now we've got balance. Travel to our apparatus and we've got a balance on it. And that's where we're going to leave it today. Next time, see if you can remember that and we can build on some more. Right? We're you said to, to the children, remember what you've done and we'll come back to that. Are there any things you can think of that will help them remember it? No. <laughs> It's fine, that's great. It's something, that actually, it's very interesting. We do it with other subjects, but we don't do it in PE often enough. And I always say to the children, could you go back and write and it down? Write it down. Oh, that would never occur to me. Because PE go. is all physical yes. movements. And then the other thing you could do is actually you had a good digital camera, come in, take pictures of the balances, right. print them up, get the children to actually put on the computer what, what their balance name right. is or what they're actually yeah. doing. And that way you've got a record for everybody. And you can get them to actually draw it. So starting point, da, 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 little map, finishing point. Yeah. Yeah. Now you need to use all of the apparatus. You've got all these wall bars. You are so lucky. Alison, how have you found the You've use of the video the today? I think it's brilliant because um, you cannot remember a whole lesson. You, there, are, there are other children doing things on here that I can see now that I wasn't aware of at the time. We can talk about different movements and I can see it. Whereas if we'd just written it down, I'd be trying to remember who did what and had their leg where or whatever. I think it's brilliant. And you can look at it again and again. So I'm going to give you a couple of minutes now to show each other what you're doing. As a learner, I need to see and do because I will remember the visual image and uh, the physical movements. And I would think this is particularly important in gymnastics. Excellent. Well done. Oh, I feel it's important uh, as a primary school teacher that you should do your best in all the subjects and I know that all primary school teachers do feel like this and I felt that um, a gymnastics was a, a problem area for me and I'm glad now that all this work with Sharon has I've really improved so much. I'm going to ignore the apparatus, you can move around it, do not touch it, just move slowly around it. I think every teacher comes in feeling that because they can't do gymnastics themselves, they're not going to be able to teach it correctly. And that is totally wrong. Teachers don't have to be able to do the gymnastics skills. They have to be able to look at the children and select those that are performing what they wanted. The areas that I think they need developing in are definitely basic gymnastics skills, right from the starting point, and that's even at key stage one. So looking at basic shapes, basic ways of travelling, how they can travel on floor, how they then can travel on apparatus. I think if it starts at key stage one, teachers will be a lot more confident with the children when they come to key stage two. Any teacher can learn how to teach gym effectively. Is there anybody who would like to say anything about what they've seen? <laughs>